All right, go on. All right, thank you. Good evening, and welcome to the December 8, 2014 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Oglis? Mr. Buffard? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Paul? Here. Mr. DuPont? And Mr. Mazur? Here. And would you, for the record, please indicate that Mr. McGee is a voting member this evening with the absence of Mr. DuPont? Our first item on the agenda this evening is the approval of minutes of November 17, 2014. I move to approve. Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? I have to abstain. Any opposed? We have one abstention. So four in favor, no opposed, one abstention. <clears throat> Our next item this evening, item number four, is a consent item. Waterhouse Acres Subdivision, Richard Waterhouse requests the final subdivision <coughs> review for a three-lot subdivision off West Beach Ridge Road. And this is a consent item. Mr. Chase, could you introduce this, please? Sure, absolutely. Yes, uh, this is an item that received board approval, or preliminary approval, on November 17th. At that time, the board was satisfied with the overall plans and really had no remaining questions, and so moved it to a uh, consent item for approval this evening. Um, just by way of background, this is a three-lot residential subdivision in the Rural and Farming Zone RF District. Uh, which required a conservation subdivision design approach. Uh, the board heard this item uh, through the month of October, held public comment on it as well. Um, and with that, and based on the board's previous discussion and preliminary approval, we've drafted a draft, a motion for the board to consider um, this evening. That's all I have for I you. Don't believe that I have that. Right there. Oh, um, I think I sent that out for you. That's right. Sorry, that was part of my Other staff end? comments that I sent out earlier. Yes, this one, this one can be struck because it's been dealt with. Gotcha. Thank you. <coughs> So I will make a motion so that we can have discussion at some point. At the board's November 17th meeting, the item received preliminary approval. At that time, the board agreed to consider the final approval as a consent item. Staff has reviewed the final plan submission and no further comments from staff. So having said that, I move that the application, Richard Waterhouse, for the plan titled Conservation Subdivision Plan of Waterhouse Acres as prepared by Sebago Technics, dated 11-18-14. The subdivision creates three residential lots with frontage along West, Reef, West Beach Ridge Road and an open space parcel consistent with the requirements of Section 7A of the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance and the review criteria of the subdivision ordinance with the following conditions. One. Prior to the release of the Mylar, the applicant shall pay the traffic impact fees. Two, prior to the issuance of a building permit for lots one and three, a $250 recreation contribution fee shall be paid. And three, prior to the issuance of a building permit for any of the lots, the required delineation markers for the 25-foot no-disturb buffer zone to the wetlands shall be installed. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Ron. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? And I show that to be unanimous. Give that to Karen. I'll give that to Karen. <coughs> Thank you. As mentioned earlier, our next item uh, on the agenda has been tabled at the request of the applicant. 
that being the Habitat for Humanity for Greater Portland, requesting a final subdivision review for a 13 lot residential subdivision off Broad Turn Road called Foster Farms Subdivision 2. Moving on, item number six, mainly Tubbs requests the site plan amendment review for a four, excuse me, for 415 Payne Road. Mr. Chase. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just trying to call up the site plan here so folks can see what we're talking about. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as just noted, this uh, application is before the board for a change of use at 415 Payne Road. Um, ostensibly, the, the crux of the review really has to do with parking calculations. Back in, I believe it was 19, yes, it was 1999, the planning board approved, uh, this is the site of the form of the mill stores, now formerly mill stores. The board approved a reduced parking allowance at the site as is allowed through the town's off-street um, off parking regulations and the zoning ordinance. Um, at that time, the site would have been required to build 138 parking spaces, but the board, through the regulations of the zoning ordinance, the review criteria therein, uh, allowed for the development of 75 parking spaces based on that particular use. The approval was conditioned that any change of use would require board action. Uh, as was just noted, Mill Stores has closed and mainly Tubbs is looking to occupy the space in addition to occupying the existing space they're also actually looking to do some reconfigure, reconfiguration on the interior and add some, uh, some more square footage uh, in a mezzanine type area, um, which triggered a, another s look at, uh, uh, at the parking on site. Uh, the required parking for the proposed activities would require typically 86 parking spaces per our regulations. Our, regular, our regulations have changed pretty significantly from 99 to to today's standards in terms of the type of activity. So um, again, the, the proposed usage that the, these folks are looking for would require 86 spaces with some parking reconfiguration, i.e. Uh, narrow, narrower parking spaces. We used to require 10-foot parking spaces. We now allow 9-foot. They can accommodate, without any additional pavement, 83 parking spaces. So they're three spaces short. Um, so really other than some restriping and internal work, they aren't changing the site ostensibly. It's just, as I said, repurposing. So really the question for the board, before the board tonight, is um, applying those standards of uh, Section 11C of the Zoning Ordinance, which speak to off-street parking and the board's allow ability to allow reduced parking on site. Is the board confident that what the applicant's proposing can be carried on with the proposed 83 parking spaces. Um, so that's the crux of the conversation. Um, I believe that the board, you know, staff felt that if the board was comfortable, we have drafted a motion for the board to consider if you are comfortable with what is being proposed this evening. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Chase. I would like to remind the board that uh, <clears throat> prior to the last meeting of this board, there was an administrative approval made for this site that allowed for um, the ability of the applicant to be able to provide a small ramp, uh, drive up ramp into um, a new warehousing location that they were looking for on the site, um, which in fact was approved. So just kind of remind the board of that. Um, and uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for the thorough introduction, Jay. My name is Mike Tatama Wieland. I'm an engineer with Face Buff and Thorndike. I'm here with Jim Van Fleet of Manly Tubbs and Jim Biscop of Biscop Construction. Uh, I'll, I'll just give you a little introduction. But I'm sure most people know uh, the area in question, but the existing Manly Tubbs site is at 408 Payne Road, and they're looking to relocate nearly across the street at the, the site of the existing mill stores. Uh, as, as Jay mentioned, we're here really to uh, seek a reduction in the required number of parking spaces. When you calculate the number of spaces per code, the uses uh, total a requirement of 86 spaces. Uh, with the restriping that's planned, uh, we'll achieve 83 spaces. That said, Mainly Tubbs experience across the street 
really indicates they have 25 to 30 customers a day, so their 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 parking demand uh, is really expected to be m much less than the 83 they're going to provide. So by restriping, we're doing what we can to <coughs> get as close as possible to the required 86, really without uh, without adding impervious area. Um, other than that, the site will remain as it is today. It was last approved uh, in 1999, as Jay said. I can also point you to the location of the the ramp that was approved that that Chairman Paul referred to. It's uh, on the south side of the building in this location. Um, but other than that, the proposal is to keep the site as it is today. So. With that, we're happy to answer any questions the board might have. All right. Thank you. Uh, before I turn this over to the board, the, the public does have an opportunity for public comment this evening. If there's anybody who is here who would like to comment on this particular item, please feel free to approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. We ask that you try to keep your comments to five minutes or less. <coughs> Seeing no one running up. I'm going to assume that we do not need public comment on this item, and I will, in fact, turn it over to the board. Mr. McGee, would you like to start us? Sure. Uh, do you have any intention of using the outdoor sales area? Out of yes, but not right away. Okay. Uh, the, the reason I'm asking is um, whether or not it would be um, prudent to maybe have a handicap spot nearer to the outdoor sales area for somebody. I think there are three handicap spots there right now that may not show on that chart, but yeah, they're here. The, um, whether we need to add depends on what products we might put out there. It's kind of an open opportunity for us right now, and I don't really have a significant plan that I can report on. Okay. Sir, could I ask you to state your name for the record, please? I'm, yes, I'm Jim Van Fleet. I'm the owner of Mainly Tubs. Thank you. I, would, I just didn't, I think I'd encourage you whether or not it's you know, required of you by law to maybe try to get one towards the, towards one of the parking spots near the outdoor sales area just for the sake of those that might. For uh, access frat. by handicapped people yeah. to the, yeah. But I mean, I think we'd have to make some other changes too because there's probably a, an elevation of asphalt there that a wheelchair, for instance, couldn't get across. So uh, outside of that, I have, I have no problems with reducing the number of parking spaces. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Okay. Thank you. So I'm fine with the uh, number of parking spaces as well. Uh, just a couple of minor things. Uh, the sign I see on the plan, the existing sign, are you going to have a sign in a similar location, or uh, are you going to make any major changes? I don't part? think we're going to make a major, major change. Um, I, I like the idea that they had an electronic sign there just so that we could tell people that we were moving in a few months, so that was uh, advantageous. But um, we have two proposals out for signs right now, and it would be in the manner of <coughs> and consistent with what we already have down at 408. If anything, it would stay largely the same because we want some kind of visual continuity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about... Uh a landscaping plan. Do you do you plan on doing anything along the road? The uh, in my existing neighborhood, um, I planted trees and have grass open enough so there's some visibility of the products that we have on our farmer's porch and that sort of thing. Um, so I like the fact that there are already plenty of trees on one side. The elevation of that mound. Is, is a little high for me, so whether we bring that down and plant some other shrubbery. Um, my opinion is that the building needs some uh, aesthetic help, yeah. um, and so I would have some intentions. No, to be determined. Yeah. 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 Thank, you. Great. Thank you, Dave. Mr. Phillips. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I have much to add. I'm, I think I'm okay with this, too. and. Um, no need to create more impervious surface, and I think even if you're successful in kind of expanding your operations based on the, the history, you should have more than enough, and 
You know, we have 33 spaces now yeah. um, where we are, and uh, so this is not quite tripling the existing spaces that have proved satisfactory. Now, our, and our staff has grown a fair amount as well. So it's a it's a it's a neat success story, but we understand with it comes the import of staying within guidelines. So, thanks. All right, thank you, Corey. Mr. Manager. Yeah, I just have uh, one comment for staff. If they are uh, working with new signs, do they have to come up to the new sign ordinances, uh, st the, the sign specifications that we now have in effect? Well, they would have to uh, submit a, a sign permit, which the code officer would would look at. Um, but in terms of, as was just mentioned, they do have an electronic reader board that was approved, so sort of reusing that wouldn't be problematic if they stay within the same general parameters of the existing sign. I don't think there would be any issues. If there were to be significant changes, um, then we may have to look at that you know, a little further just to see what's going on there. But um, I don't for, foresee any issues with what he's talking about or what may be permitted on the site. How many years have you been in business now? Pardon me? How many years have you been in business? Well, um, 37 years. Yeah, see, I, I, I want to commend you on that. You know, it's not that often that businesses, uh, local-owned businesses, stay in existence that long. So, kudos yeah. to you. Well, we have had, um, we've been blessed with a lot of success, and it, it, thank you. That's all I have. All right, thank you, Ron. Uh, I guess the only question that I have is, and, and also I am not uh, opposed to the reduction in spaces. Um, Certainly, a couple of things do come to mind. Normally, when we do this, we always ask the question that in the event the needed spaces weren't, or the, the additional spaces were needed, where, if any place, could they be placed on the existing site? I mean, we're only talking three, so I don't think we've got a big issue here, but it's just yeah. for the record. That we we normally do not ask that they be built out, obviously, right? But what we do ask is that those potential parking spaces be shown on the site plan as potential future build out. Um, and again, the the part of the purpose for doing this is that it's great that you are there. You may not have the requirements of that. We hope that in a short amount of time you outlive this space, need to move on to something bigger, and whoever comes into that particular piece of property needs to be able to have the ability to be able to have the parking spaces that they might need for that size facility. So because of that, again, we're not asking anybody to build anything out. All that we ask is that you show us on the site plan where you could put them. Sure. And that generally meets any requirement that we may have yeah, uh, in terms of – so it's a drawing issue, okay? Sure, yeah. Can I uh, add that – so back in 1999 when, when the board and at, at the time the mill source went through this process, they did just that. Um, at the time they were – Trying to get to the 138 spaces that were that were required at the time, and what was approved at that time was a plan uh, showing a reconfiguration of that what's now shown as the the outdoor uh, sales area. Um, I I think it still works. Oh, there it is, Jay's queued it right up for us. So I, I think, considering that there there really are no changes other than striping proposed to the plan, I I think this plan would. <laughs> I think this plan would work um, I I if the board is willing to accept this as sort of our our future the reserve parking plan. I I, the answer is yes and no. Because if I approve or we approve that site plan as we look at it today, it does not include your ramp. Sure. So I'm not asking for much here. I'm asking you to show me three spaces on the plan that you have that's approved today. 
Yeah. We're happy to submit we're happy to, to provide staff. that. Sure. All you need to do is submit it to staff, okay? I, we don't need to make it any more difficult than that, but I just Perfect. in order for consistency's sake with other applicants, just want to make sure that we show a plan that is um, that will work within the the, uh, the ordinance that we have today. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. We can we can handle that. All right. So, Mr. Chair, um, just to that point, uh, as staff was drafting a potential motion for the board in consideration, that the board may be comfortable with with the proposal. One of the conditions we had considered was um, enabling the ability to pull forward the 99 alternative parking plan, provided that um, it be a baseline, as our zoning ordinance talks about, and that the code enforcement officer finds a need for additional parking, that the applicant would need to appear before this board and work through what the final determined, uh, to wor work through the final details of those parking spaces. Okay. Um, so certainly if the board wants to, to have a a new plan depicting three spaces, we can work that way, or if you're comfortable with the way the condition's drafted, just bring that to your attention. Um, so I think either way it would be, you know, they'd probably just take some of the existing outdoor sales area and show that it would be parking anyway. So. All right, so it's also conditioned that if anybody else that mainly tubs is at this facility, they need to come back. Correct. Okay, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I don't have a problem with that. I think it covers both items okay. conditionally. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the board? Okay. I would like to move to approve the application of Euphoria 415 LLC, DBA mainly tubs, for the expansion of usable space within the existing building at 415 Payne Road as described in the material submitted on their behalf by FST dated November 24, 2014. The applicant has demonstrated that the proposed activities can be occupied with the establishment of 83 parking spaces rather than the 86 spaces which would typically be required if the re minimum parking standards were to be applied. This approval is conditioned upon the use of the building is restricted to the proposed activities of mainly tubs. Any change of use will need to comply with the town's minimum parking standards or as otherwise approved by the planning board. If at any time after construction the code enforcement officer determines that the actual need for parking exceeds the number of spaces developed, the code enforcement officer may order the owner of the property to, to appear before the board for a determination by the board as to whether some or all of the reserved parking spaces as depicted on the 1999 alternative parking plan must be developed. And prior to the issuance of a building permit, the site plan shall be revised to add the notes referencing the two conditions above. The revised plan shall be provided to planning staff for approval. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And I show that to the unanimous. <laughs> All right, our next item this evening is item number seven. Star Homes, Inc. requests a preliminary review for a four-lot residential subdivision, subdivision <coughs> off Burnham Road titled Burnham Heights Subdivision. Mr. Chase. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see. As I just mentioned, this is for a four-lot residential uh, subdivision within the Rural and Farm District. Uh, this subdivision triggers the provisions of the town's conservation subdivision design 
uh, which requires uh, open space in excess or equal to or in excess of 50 percent of the lot area, the total lot area, um, and enables lots, you know, as since 50 percent of the land needs to be maintained as open space rather than the standard 80,000 square foot lot and 200 feet of frontage. Um, the design calls for a minimum lot size of 30,000 square foot lots with 100 feet of frontage. This application was before the board, I believe it was last October 6th, uh, for some initial discussion. Um, and the board, or the applicant is back before the board for a preliminary uh, review, a second preliminary review. We'll note, board members will likely recall this was previously a five lot subdivision. Uh, the applicant has tailored it uh, to a, back to a four lot subdivision. Um, you will have received staff comments from planning staff the town's peer review engineer as well as the town's engineer uh, with regards to this uh, item. Um, you know, just in terms of the board's prior discussion, I think um, there was the board sort of focused on uh, traffic considerations, uh, streetscape details, as well as wetland impacts seem to be sort of the, the pressing issues that the board had, had touched on, among others. Um, I will note that uh, we received an email today from a Mr. Spencer, which has been provided to the board on this item, um, with some comments as well. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jay. Mr. Thompson, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Bill Thompson with BH Storm Engineers. I'm here with uh, Joe Fristacci from Star Homes. As Jay indicated, we were here in October to present a, a preliminary design for, again, what was a five-lot subdivision on the Burnham Road. This is the rural zone, RF zone, which requires a conservation design. Uh, we heard comments from the, the board, the staff, and the neighbors. Uh, we took a look at it, and uh, Joe said, well, let's go back to a four-lot subdivision. It just uh, seemed to give a little bit more space for each lot, um, uh, gave us more open space, a little more room to, to build the house and, and make the lots uh, uh, work the way Joe uh, would like them to work. So. Again, we have done the net residential calculations that would support, I believe, 4.7 lots. We're going to propose four. Uh, they'll have a little bit more frontage uh, on the road, as you can see from, from my drawing here. Um, each lot is a, uh, they're about an acre lot. Um, so again, it's a conservation zone. We could go smaller than that. But this design here gives us a little over 12 acres of open space out of the 16.3. So uh, we believe we've got, uh, we've got open space that certainly qualifies uh, for the ordinance. Uh, in our conversation in October, uh, we talked about septic systems and locations. We've moved the septic systems uh, more to the rear of the lots uh, and created the well zones uh, on the street um, part of the lots, which, which agrees with and, and meets with the uh, uh, abutting lots. So the septic systems on the back. Uh, we had a nitrate study done, which was asked uh, by the board to have, have us complete. Uh, nitrate plumes, again, go off to the north. Uh, none of them leave the site for the 10 milligrams per liter. So we uh, uh, meet, that, uh, meet that requirement. And on this plan also it shows where uh, well zones and where wells could be located on each lot and not be impacted by, by any uh, septic system. Uh, we do have a 75-foot stormwater buffer on the rear of the lots, which is shown hatched. Uh, that will be pinned out to meet the, uh, the requirements of the town. And I do need to tighten up the pins a little bit for a 50-foot spacing, which uh, Jay indicated in his memo. Uh, we've added uh, all the standard notes that uh, the town asked for that usually come out of Jim Wendell's office. Uh, we've we've made that uh, made that uh, uh, complete on the uh, on the sheet on on the subdivision plan. Uh, the pl board also asked us to do a grading plan, which we've done. Uh, blew the scale up a little bit. Um, to show how the lots could be graded and not impact any of the abutting landowners, which is a requirement of any project. Stormwater cannot impact down gradient properties. Very easily uh, accomplished. We've shown uh, a potential uh, building site, the grading, and with the uh, swales and, and ditches, uh, we can bring the stormwater back again to the north through the stormwater buffer, which, which, is, a, which is what we'd like to do. <coughs> it's a positive thing and then out into the open space with no impact, um, again, to the, any of the neighboring lots. Um, there is an existing fire tank 
located here across the street on the Dunn Estates Drive, uh, less than a thousand feet from any of the proposed homes. Um, again, there was concern about you know traffic and sight distance, and we've had our traffic engineer take a look at Bill Bray's study and comes back with a little bit of a different uh, recommendation, um, which I'll go into. Um, but to eliminate any concerns, you know, with, with people coming out onto uh, Burnham Road, each of the lots with, this, with these uh, driveway will have a turnaround area for people coming out of the garage, back in, and be able to drive out of their lot, even though, you know, we, we don't believe there's a, an issue and a traffic engineer uh, is outlining some, some slight improvements to, again, to better the situation, if you will. But the way Joe would develop it with the house and garage, there'll be a, an area for any of the driveway, excuse me, the cars leaving the driveway to be able to turn around and, and head out in the right direction. Again, nitrate study was done, part of our submission. Uh, our, so the traffic engineers, uh, take, our traffic engineers taking a look at the, uh, the uh, site conditions out there and, and there is the, the need or the potential for some trimming, if you will, to, uh, to better the situation. Uh, Bill Bray's recommendation was to cut everything back 15 feet, which would get us to the edge of the right-of-way. Um, Girl Parma said, gee, that seems a little excessive. Uh, site distance is measured 10 feet from the edge of pavement. If we trim back to 15, we're going to lose some mature trees and really make it look uh, more open than it needs to be. So Girl Parma suggests that uh, we, we measure the site distance back at 10 feet from the pavement. Um, take, as each site is being developed, and take a look at what needs to be trimmed, uh, what can be done to enhance, if you will, the uh, site distance, which needs to be 305 feet based on a 35 mile an hour speed zone. There were no major issues uh, with, with accomplishing that, but rather than just, you know, broad base, go back 15 feet and cut everything that's there, let's take a look at it and just have it targeted to when the lot is developed, um, when the homeowner gets to pick the house, do they want the driveway, the garage on the left, the right, and um, and get it get it approved by code that that this driveway does meet uh, safe site distance. So that's what we'd like to like to see happen as as part of this proposal. Uh, there will be uh, homeowner stocks, um, so the management of the open space, which there are no uh, active um, improvements uh, proposed for that. But there'll also be uh, language in there to allow the immediate uh, butters use of the open space for a passive recreation, a walk, a hike, uh, snowshoeing, or whatever they might uh, like to do on that. So Joe's agreed um, at, at a request um, to include that, and we'll have those documents uh, to the town before our next meeting. Uh, Jay's comments came to me um, with just basically probably four or five things. Uh, we did redo the net residential calculations uh, because we are down to a full lot subdivision. Um, we are in an aquifer overlay protection district. We have taken a look at the regulations on that, and there's nothing in there that can't be met. Um, there's, a, there's a concern in there if you have a septic system or a, or a sewer system at over 2,000 gallons per day. There are issues that, that you need to overcome, but we uh, have met the stormwater requirements um, with the buffer and the basic standards, which is, which is basically uh, erosion control and uh, stabilization of the site, which our grading plan with the addition of sill fence and all of these notes here refer to the best management practices which DEP um, utilizes and regulates. We have details of, of how all the improvements um, will be done to meet that requirement. Uh, again, I mentioned a little while ago about the uh, iron rod delineation on the buffers. Uh, we've got a few of them spaced out a little bit more than 50 feet. Um, final plan will have the uh, the correct um, spacing on those. Um, we talked about the uh, site clearing at the street. Jim Wendell had one comment. Uh, he wanted a 15-foot drainage easement, drainage and maintenance easement uh, at the street uh, in front of the two open space areas. Um, no, no issue with us. So we we certainly uh, we have shown them, and, and we'll make that part of the uh, final approval. Would it occur in uh, peer review for the town? Came back with just uh, a, a couple of general notes about the uh, no buffer strips. Um, again, the erosion control sheet needed some uh, sill fence. 
And other than that, they said all previous comments have been adequately addressed. So with that, um, again, we think we've gone back to the drawing board, brought back uh, less dense development, uh, more open space, and I think we've um, met or accomplished the, uh, the requirements for the preliminary submission. Thank you. Very, thank you, John. Um, <clears throat> normally, I'd be turning this over to the board, um, as we have had public comment on this item before, but at the board's discretion, we do have the ability to offer additional public comment. Uh, I think this evening we will do just that um, and give the uh, give some of the uh, local people an opportunity to come back and discuss some of their concerns. So. With that, I will turn it over to public comment. Once again, I would ask that people approach the podium, state their name and address for the record. We ask that you try to keep your comments to five minutes or less. Uh, good evening, I'm uh, Charles Spencer. I live at 125 Burnham Road, which would be the home directly across from the proposed um, houses being built on Burnham Road. Um, I did send an email this morning to uh, Mr. Chase. I don't know if the board has had a chance to read that, but I will read it to you. Dear Mr. Chase, I'm writing to you to express concerns my wife Eileen and I have on the proposed Burnham Heights subdivision. We do not agree with the comment that was made by the planning board member during the last meeting comparing homes and road frontage on Burnham Road to homes on Black Point Road. Comparing neighborhoods built in the 1960 through 1980 to a 2014, it should be 14, development is not an accurate comparison. The building lot size is, is smaller in the Black Point area. There are sidewalks, <coughs> additional width to the roads for pedestrian and bike traffic, sidewalks, and additional road width is not designed in this area. As stated in our last letter to the planning board, we have concerns with the amount of homes proposed in such a small, small section of road frontage. We understand that Mr. Fittachi is trying to obtain the full potential out of developing his property. We do not agree with his proposed redesign of now building four homes on 713 feet of road frontage. The four home proposal will still not conform to the character of the established homes on Burnham Road that have 200 foot of road frontage. If three homes were developed along this stretch of Burnham Road, they would allow, they would follow the design of the neighborhood with the 200 road frontage. Um, the planning board expressed that a traffic study is not needed. As we stated in our previous letter to the planning board, commuters use this section of road to bypass traffic congestion, congestion on routes 22 and 114. The section of a road is on a curve and traffic does not heed the posted limit of 35 miles per hour. Adding four driveways in this short stretch of road on a curve could create a hazardous situation for public safety. And I'd like to add to that is that um, it's nice to know that they were going to put like a bit of a hammerhead for their driveways but there's no guarantee that the homeowner would use the hammerhead as a turnaround to drive out facing <coughs> Burnham Road. The trees on Burnham Road are tall and have a shallow root system because of the high water table. The trees near a clear cut area become unstable when surrounding trees are cut down. What is the width of the proposed tree buffer, which the gentleman just explained, between the new homes and road? Will the buffer zone be designed using existing trees as a buffer or add new trees and shrubs? And also with the, uh, the amount of homes being placed in this uh, area, I don't know if you're aware, but the previous owner of this property did do a, uh, a bit of selective cutting in that and harvested a lot of wood um, two years ago. And so with more homes, that with the homes proposed there, now they, they're going to even cut down more trees and it will basically be looking like a clear cut area. The map representing the abutting homes is not to scale but what we had seen online, which mysteries represents on how close the new property line is to, to the existing homes. And uh, we hope that the planning board considers our concerns and makes the right recommendation 
to Mr. Fratacci on for developing his property. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Jana Whipple, and I live to the left at 120 Burnham Road, um, the left of the proposed development. I have only a question of the board because what's been hounding me since this happened, since, since when we moved in eight years ago, we knew we would have neighbors eventually. Um, our lot, as we said before, is very, very close. The well is 11 feet away from the lot line. Um, so we knew we were probably going to end up with a close neighbor at some point. We're not antisocial. We're not um, opposed to having neighbors. Um, well aware that there could be the potential for three houses put in there. We're not, um, I don't want to use the word protesting, but we're, we're not against three houses going in there, having, having three new neighbors. That's not a problem for us. What I don't understand is when you have a law in town, i.e. a conservation law, why is it so easy for people to come in and change that law? Um, I, I, that, that's just been sort of hounding me, that, every, that we have laws in place for a reason, and then it seems to be very easy for people to just come in and take those existing laws um, and overturn them. And that, that, that's what keeps me up at night. Why is it that once we have a law, um, somebody can come in and just reverse it just because they want to make a little bit of money? And I'm, believe me, I, I believe in capitalism. <laughs> um, but th that's my only comment. I just, it's just a question that I have. All right. Thank you, Ms. Wilkins. I'm Cindy Heelan, and I live at 128 Burnham Road, which is to the right side of the proposed subdivision. And I appreciate the efforts that are being made to try to make this to fit in with the neighborhood a little bit more. And a couple of things that I just wanted to reiterate that other people have said are um, one thing that this map is not to scale as to where the houses are placed on either side. And personally, my house is about 25 feet from the edge of the lot, much bigger than what it looks like on on this drawing. And I have concerns of a small lot with the house being placed, you know, that close to the edge, close to my lot. I know these are these are small lots, and I, having lived there for 33 years, I'm really concerned with the drainage, and you know what what our recourse would be if we start suddenly having a lot more water in our yards, because I've seen over the years when we have wet springs, what, what that looks like out there, and um, you know, even on those lots. So um, even though they're, they're making efforts to um, fit in with the neighborhood, I still see some, some issues and um, would like to see the lots be widened a little bit more to fit the place, and also some assurances that I'm not going to be looking out my, suddenly looking out my bedroom window and having some a house 25 feet away or 40 feet away. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Le uh, Helan. Anyone else? All right. Seeing none, I'll turn it over to the board. Mr. Mazur, can I start with you? Yeah, but I want to start with Jay. Jay, can you explain so it's understood how the conservation... Yeah, in, t in terms of the, the zoning, um, yeah, this application is meeting the existing zoning. The conservation subdivision design standards um, essentially allow for the development of a parcel to be de developed in what would I would... Uh, term a, a uh, density neutral pattern. So if this, let's call it 16 acre lot, were to be developed under standard RF zoning, i.e. 
roughly two acres per lot with 200 feet of frontage, there could be <coughs> four lots, say. Um, so what, what the ordinance allows or requires in the RF zone, if you have a lot that has meet certain threshold, i.e., in this instance, uh, greater than one acre of wetlands on the lot, you're required to do a conservation subdivision design. What that means is automatically half of the lot, the gross lot, needs to go into open space, at least 50%. Um, and as I said, to get to sort of um, density neutral, it allows for reduced lot sizes. So rather than an 80,000 square foot lot, you could develop a minimum of 30,000 square feet. They can be bigger. In this case, some of the lots are range up from 38,000 to 45,000, roughly an acre in size, I think, as was stated. Uh, the other reduction that's allowed through the existing conservation subdivision standards in the zoning ordinance is fr from a reduction of the standard 200 feet of frontage, which is required for a single lot division, is through the subdivision process. It's a minimum frontage of 100 feet. Um, again, that's a minimum. You can't exceed that, and I think by and large, the frontages that I was looking at today range in the 130 to 150 range, plus or minus. Um, so the, the current proposal does meet the existing zoning, um, so there hasn't been any modifications to that um, in that regard. So Thank you. I hope I've addressed that question. Okay. Now, having said that, can I ask a few questions, please? Um, in going through the materials that were presented to the board and also staff comments, um, I'd still like, because you went through this quickly for me, um, there is still some concern about the net residential calculation. So I, I'm not sitting here feeling that there's agreement between you and staff on that calculation. So can you clarify that for me? Yes. Um, the net residential calculation has been corrected. We have a request for four lots. You take the total area with the, with the deducts divided by the underlying zone of 80,000 square feet comes out to be 4.69 lots. That's taking out this easement, wetlands, and coming up with 4.69 lots, which exceeds the proposal for four. And the previous one was was based on this easement not being in existence, and we were looking for five lots on that calculation. So it's been corrected to reflect the existing conditions on this plan. I haven't had a chance to see the numbers, but that certainly does make it make sense with the applicants talking about that easement area. Um, pretty small, and, and so the plans we have do show that was spot, it was plus five lots, and now they're saying it's four and a half lots, which amounts to four um, when we do our net res determination. So certainly something with a detail we would require to be uh, seen prior to any final approval, certainly. Gotcha. And Jim Wendell's comments, mm -hmm. address those, because you went by that again quickly for okay. me, the 15-foot drainage and maintenance easement. Okay, the only comment I got from Jim Wendell was uh, dated December 2nd. The town requires a 15-foot wide drainage and maintenance easement along the frontage of open space with Burnham Road. That's what I'm referring to. Correct. That's these two areas here, which is outside of the right-of-way, out of the lot. He wants an additional 15-foot easement for the potential of any drainage or maintenance uh, to the shoulder, to the edge of the road, and be able to go on to that open space, which, is, which will be owned by the homeowners. So that easement will be granted to the town. Um, one general comment, and I, I understand when there's new construction, there has to be some sacrifice of, of woodland and, mm -hmm. and so forth, but I'd like to go on record as saying I'd like to see the disruption as little as possible. Uh, and I understand, again, understanding that, of course, there has to be some renovation to the area, but keeping it down to as minimal as possible. Uh, I think the applicant would, too, whether he builds the ho homes or not. Is uh, I think everybody likes a little privacy. The side yard not going to cut right up to the line. And, and again, along the street, um, 
I think we have an opportunity with a 25-foot setback to, to try to keep as much of that short of the, the uh, slight trimming for site distance. So I think, I think the same thing out in the country here. I think they'll, they'll work real hard to, to minimize the, uh, the cutting. And one other comment that I want to emphasize, uh, actually two more, but one is the uh, putting in writing for future homeowners the aqua protection overlay to make sure that everybody understands the rules and regulations now and going forward. Correct. I agree. There will be a note on the final plan. And, and the last thing, because we've had other projects and so far uh, so good with the other projects in which there was a concern about drainage and running off into uh, about his properties to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen. And, I, and I, I know I'm being general there, but I'm going to make the general comment that hopefully that will be addressed during construction. Um, let me just try to clarify the side property lines. Um, I do plan to build... Excuse uh, me, Mr. Fastie, could you oh, state sorry. your name? Thank you. I'm sorry. Joe Fastacci, I'm the applicant with Star Homes. Um, we're planning to build houses no more than 50 to 60 feet wide. That will give you an 80 to 90 foot um, unbuildable area or unbuilt area on the sides. So that would be somewhere in the vicinity of 40 to 45 feet to the property line. Uh, on each lot. Uh, we did put in a no-cut buffer on the lots to assure that the trees would remain uh, on the property lines. I don't believe in cutting trees down. I try to cut as, as few as I can uh, and let the potential home buyer basically choose what they want to cut down. So we are trying to keep in the, the, um, the general character of the neighborhood and leave as many trees as possible, both on the front and the sides. So uh, hopefully uh, the narrower houses, these, lot, um, these properties were increased when we dropped one lot. So they are wider lots now, so that will give us the opportunity to, to uh, leave more trees. Thank you. That's it. Go I have to ask a point of clarification, Mr. Chair. Sure. Just to be clear, on the plan set that the board has, there's a no-cut uh, no area in the back of the lots. There's a 75-foot stormwater buffer, and I thought I heard reference that you had talked about maintaining a no-cut cut along all the side, all the on the, on the two sides, on the two sides. We do have a uh, request to cut trees down in the front mm -hmm. because of traffic, but we will maintain as many trees as we possibly can. I think there's a note there that we would leave uh, trees that are, have a uh, diameter of greater than six inches, but that's something that, you know, um, we will talk to you about what your requests are. We will, we will honor it, uh, but on the front there will be a, a probably a no-cut buffer also. Uh, these these houses are not, I think your setback is 25 feet from the property line. We're looking to put them back at least 40 feet to allow that turnaround, that driveway turnaround, so that the people can drive out uh, as opposed to backing out into that busy street on that street. Um, okay. All set. Thank you. All set. Dave? Thank you. Uh, my only comment is that I agree with the recommendations of the Goro Palmer uh, study mm -hmm. regarding the cutting the trees along the road. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, the less the better mm -hmm. as far as uh, the number of trees that you cut down. Um, and I think that would be better for the entire neighborhood. Thank you, Dave. Nick? Yeah, I think um, I believe this is the uh, <coughs> project that I was questioning about your septic placement and your well placement, and I appreciate the mm -hmm. extra time you took to go back and look at those items. Um, quick question for staff. Um, is it typical to put um, well drilling information on a plan somewhere in the notes here? I, when I was reading the report yeah. here, the, uh, the Sevy and Mayor Engineers 
they, they basically said that they, uh, they thought dug well should be prohibited on the properties. And I just didn't know if that's something that would show up on our on a mile IRR. If it's some if it's an issue that the board's concerned about in terms of the development of the lots, then certainly I think that would make sense to show up on the on the mylar that if it if there's a concern with a dug well versus a, dr a drilled well, mm -hmm. then I do think that would make sense as a note on, on the plan. Um, so yeah, we we, I, we can certainly do yeah, that. Yeah, I would I would yeah. I would feel more comfortable if that was sure. on the in the note somewhere. Okay. Um, outside of that, I kind of echo the comments from the the rest of the my board members here. Um, you know, take as few trees as possible, and yeah. uh, for those of you that are neighbors, I I just wanted to let you know that. Um, from from where we sit, um, you know, we're looking at something that is is fairly in compliance with what we what we deal with for standards. And I appreciate that you have those concerns, and, and I hope you guys can appreciate that what we're looking at here um, meets the town standards for the most part. So, um, with that said, I'm all set. Great. Thank you, Nick. Mr. Fellows, before I go to you. Um, I'm going to do something most unusual, and since this is my last meeting, I am going to have a soft spot this evening. I know that Mr. Benedict, I believe, wanted to make public comment, was not here at the time public comment was available. I will permit it, but ask that it remain at five minutes or less. Five minutes or less. Please approach the podium. Jim Benedict, 121 Burnham Road. Um, there's quite chaos in the neighborhood with this projected project going in and I'll, I'll get right to the quick real quick uh, because I've been a builder's supervisor's license in the state of Massachusetts as well as been as a septic inspector in the state of Massachusetts for over 40 years. I'd like to know where the septics are going because we have got one heck of a water problem on the whole Burham Road. And if you go one or two houses down from mine, there's sitting water eight months out of the year. On my own house, which is right across the street from Jim and Janet Whipple, um, my terrain in the front of the house, which has got the, the ditches, has water eight months out of the year. And uh, I know that every house in the area has a sump pump for bailing the basements out. And a lot of people have raised septic because of the water problem. Uh, another thing I found a little strange was everybody else's property, if you dig into it, is clay, not sand. It's clay. And one of the major thoughts in the neighborhood is, especially behind Jimma and Gianna Whipple, is that water runoff from these places, because his spot is a little bit lower, that the water runoff is going to end up in his backyard. And I wanted I wanted to know on the, on the septic what you, where. where they're intended to be built. It looks like it's the backyard, but it could be either one. I think we'll the, Mr. The, yeah we'll we'll I'm ask the question, Mr. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I see from the from the eight. <laughs> Perk tests that you talk with a hand shovel down two feet. 
and just found sand. Uh, as, a mem- as a member of the neighborhood, and I've been there for 15 years, and seeing the whole Dunn Estates Road, which is beside me, which is all brand new in about 1998, they had a lot of problems <laughs> with water. And again, every house has got a sump pump. And I'd like to see how, what the intention is on these four lots. Uh, I am glad that it went from five houses down to four. <coughs> Excuse me. But even at four, I really don't believe there's going to be a fix to the water problem that's nature. nature. And I just wanted to bring that up. So I think we're really going to have a problem from what's going in there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Benedict. Mr. Phillips. Thank you. Um, I guess before I get into a couple comments, questions I have, uh, Mr. Thompson, I'll give you the opportunity to respond to Mr. Benedict's specific questions about stormwater and soil type and septic. Sure. <clears throat> uh, septic, as he indicated, are going to be on the rear of the lots <clears throat> in within the screen area. Wells on the front, so we have the separation. Groundwater tends to be going in the north. The plumes on the septic systems, again, will stay on the property, <clears throat> but again, head off into the north. Um, all of our septic systems down to the two feet of um, exploration are sand. Um, I can't account for what else is happening in, in the neighborhood, but we have we have uh, uh, dug test pits to, that show we have a sand condition. The limiting factor 15 to 16 inches for a seasonal groundwater, um, and we've designed or they will be designed uh, based on that uh, that limitation. Um, <clears throat> surface water again is has been shown in our grading plan to to be heading off into into the north direction. These houses will all have a positive foundation drain discharging at the low elevation here. That's why the houses, the grading plan shows that the houses are being, uh, the grading picked up a little bit to get a full foundation. Um, there'll be no need for any sump pumps and uh, again, a positive outlet to the, to the rear of all those lots. So um, I think that was uh, about the extent of the questions. Um, <clears throat> question I had, and, and apologize if I missed it when you were going through things earlier, in terms of the um, the demarcation of the no disturb mm-hmm. buffer, uh, it had been suggested that, as we typically like to see, that something, uh, some sort of more definitive demarcation along the lines of a split rail fence, split rail fence, or something, something a little more visible and permanent, if you will, than, than a, just a pin be used, because those things have sometimes tend to disappear over time. I didn't know if you had a response to that or if that was something that was being considered. I don't, like I said, defer to the applicant. Okay. Um, pins are a requirement uh, recommended by DEP and, and the town, so uh, we haven't had um, many projects until recently that there's been a request for something a little more above ground, a little more significant. but. Um, you know, they will be set red capped, left up exposed with a buffer cap on it. This is no disturbed zone. So I defer to Joe if he wants to, they're asking for recomm- a, a, an agreement if we're willing to put a split rail fence along the front of these uh, stormwater buffers to keep development and activity from migrating into them. Are you talking on the front side or the rear? the rear? This would be the on the rear. The rear. We've, well, we've done that at um, Green Acres. Right. We're doing that at Sawgrass. Um, we've put them on the corners. Uh, I really don't want to put, you know, uh, 700 feet of, of a split rail fence along the back. I don't mind putting it on the corners and coming in maybe with uh, three or four sections. Uh, to identify the property lines and basically the back, that still will give them access to snowmobile, go out back for whatever reason they might pick blueberries. Uh, so I don't mind doing it on the corners, a couple of uh, a couple of sections. 
Okay, yeah, and, and certainly I'm, I'm not speaking for the board in any of this, but uh, for me, I think that yeah. that would be well, fine. Well, it's sort of a, a visual cue that... Yeah, and, and hopefully the trees that we're leaving in back are also going to market too, and not mm -hmm. not just the, uh, the pins. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, I don't think I have any other questions per se. I mean, this, this is one, we've talked about this in the past, that it seems that virtually all of the new residential developments or proposed developments that we're seeing these days are conservation subdivisions, and I think that's largely a function of what's, uh, what's available in town to develop at this point. And some are better than others in terms of their, the way that they naturally lay out and, and what's possible. Um, I've struggled with this one a little bit, partly because of the location on a, a busier uh, road. Uh, I think that most, if not all, of the other projects we've seen tend to be more internal, uh, uh, what we would use more typically see as sort of residential or sub, uh, subdivision type layouts where this is on an, a well-established borderline thoroughfare. Um, and I, I would agree with the comment, and I, I think I made the comment the last time we talked about this, that there are some differences between this and a, something like a Black Point Road. Um, but I think that, um, you know, I, certainly the reduction from, from five lots to four helps. Um, and I think we can strike the right balance between safety and aesthetics in terms of sight lines and buffers um, that uh, hopefully that it, will be, uh, it will be doable. Um, I'd like to echo my fellow board members in saying that, you know, the the, the least we can remove, the better. Um, sort of take a case-by-case -case look at it in terms of site, site uh, distances. And um, I think also compared to some other uh, recent sub, uh, conservation subdivision proposals, drainage is obviously always a concern, and we do appreciate that. Um, but the, at least to me, this one, uh, this one has uh, grading that's a little better than some others that, that I've seen recently. <laughs> so obviously it all has to be done right, but uh, I think I think it's uh, achievable. So that's all I've got. Great. Thank you. Mr. Mazur. Yeah, I have a question for, for Jay. Jay, I know this is precedes you and me for that matter. Has there been a big change in the topography? Because I'm hearing clay versus sand in the same general area and what's where's the discrepancy I'm not sure yeah, uh, the only information I know is the dug wells that we have with the applicant in terms of uh, I don't know that I've reviewed other projects out in this area I wasn't around when done the states went in so um, I can't speak to that but you understand where my confusion is a little bit that I'm hearing mr. Benedict say there's a lot of Clay area. Uh, yeah. I'm hearing the applicants. And we did hear. I mean, one of the one of the concerns that was raised by staff back in October was concerns about this area is very flat. And there's very little relief for stormwater. So public Works directors and and uh, Jim Wendell identified that you know drainage issues along uh, Burnham Road are something that they're dealing with often, and that was an issue that um, was expressed to the applicant at that meeting. Um, and I think, you know, I think with their grading plan, they've sought to address that to the best of their ability, but there is, um, this is a very flat area with very little relief to be found in terms of where water can go. Um, so that, that's certainly been a significant issue that, that our engineers have been looking at. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, you know, why, why, why there might be clay across the street or at someone else's yard, and, and the reports we have are that it's sandy materials, I, I can't speak to that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ron. Um, it, I don't have a lot of questions. I guess what I'd like to do is a little bit of a recap of some of the items that I've heard tonight and maybe hopefully provide information, if not clarification, on some items. But uh, certainly our member of the, of members of the public have come forth. And, you know, the first concern I heard was issues regarding traffic and issues regarding line of sights for driveways, et cetera. And we're meeting the line of sights that we need to meet in order to uh, to
to handle the speed limit for the area that these lots are being provided. If there is a um, concern about the speed that actually occurs there, that's, that is a code enforcement issue. It's not a planning board issue. Um, so there's really not a, much that we can do in regards to that. So again, what we have to do as a planning board is we have to look to see are the ordinances being followed, um, and that's really the only leverage that we have. If the ordinance, ordinances are in fact being followed, we do not have any real ability to be able to deny an applicant uh, unless we see something that's not in, the, in accordance with the ordinances. So uh, the situation that we have here is I think as Mr. McGee indicated earlier, the applicant is in fact following the ordinances. So when I look at line of sight, when I look at traffic, uh, when I look at the comment about uh, somebody feels that the conservation law is being changed, when in fact the conservation subdivision is actually being followed to the letter of the law. Um, when I look at home placement and I hear concerns about side setbacks, I understand, I appreciate the comment, believe me. Um, but in reality, I think that the, that the side setback requirement in this area is only 15 feet. So code enforcement could come out and say, if you're 15 feet one inch, you're in compliance. Um, so I mean, it's, it's a very, very difficult thing. If the applicant is willing to uh, put the homes in the middle of the lot to try to increase that side buffer and in fact, um, try to keep the most trees that they can keep to try to provide some kind of buffering, there's really not much more we can ask of an applicant to do in that particular case. Um, I think that if there is some um, something that the applicant does in, re in regards to providing turnarounds on each piece of property or each driveway, um, to me that makes a lot of sense. Um, that they try to do that. And certainly I am not in a position to say that nobody can ever back out of their driveway. I would wonder if people back out of their driveway today, and if they do, is that the right thing for them to be doing? So it's very difficult for us to say that you can't back out of your driveway to people who come in and buy four units at some point um, after the fact. But I do encourage the applicant to make sure that he provides a turnaround, some kind of hammerhead, uh, in the driveway so that the homeowner can in fact leave their property safely. I mean, that makes sense. But there's nothing in our ordinance that says you have to provide a turnaround so that people don't back into the street. Um, I see people, I live off Black Point Road, I see people dr backing out of Black Point Road all the time and I think, you've got to be kidding me. You know, I mean, that just absolutely makes no sense. I live off a side road, and I back into my driveway every evening. And I live on a side road, so I'm not on any main road, and there's only two houses past me on the street. So it's like people need to use common sense. We can't really legislate that, or we can't, um, we don't have ordinances to protect people from being unsafe, unfortunately, at times. Um, Septic system wise, I think uh, the applicant has asked or answered that question. Again, my concern regarding that, as we've seen recently, and we will continue to see more and more as we try to develop property here in the town of Scarborough, and I think Mr. Fellows alluded to it, one of the problems that we have today, if you will, in Scarborough is that the undeveloped land is not the most desirable land that we have left in the town. So a lot of the land that we're trying to develop now has a lot of wetland on it. And because of that, it forces the applicant to have to build conservation subdivisions. And the town recognizing that says, hey, let's protect as much property as we can in terms of open space. Let's, let's be as smart as we can in the, in the development, not create more sprawl, actually try to minimize um, the impact that we're having to a town. And again, as Mr. Fellows indicated, the one thing that's a little bit different on this particular one than what we normally see is that usually a piece of property will actually have a street and then all of the houses will enter out onto that street and then there's one access onto uh, a road such as Burnham Road. The reality of it is you can't do it on this piece of property. It's reality. 
Does that mean that the applicant should be permitted from being able to do what he can do? I don't think we as a board really want to make that decision here because, as I said earlier, I think the applicant is meeting all the ordinances and it's very, very difficult for us to try to deny um, uh, an application just because we may not feel it feels, it feels good, right? I mean, because that's kind of like what we're saying. Do we think this feels good in this location? Well, we might not, um, but it's not a personal preference that we have to make on the board. That's not our right. Our, um, our objective is to make sure that we meet the ordinances that are in place and that we're not um, denying applicants wrongly, um, but in fact that they do meet all the codes and ordinances that we have in place. Um, so I don't know if that helps. I know it's not a feel-good thing for people who aren't exactly excited about this, but um, unless we as a board can find something at some point that says this is clearly out of compliance with an ordinance, our hands are somewhat tied in terms of whether we can approve or deny. I know that we're not at that point tonight. A future board will sit and uh, make that judgment. Um, but I think that's kind of like where we are. I don't know, having said all of that, we don't need any approvals this evening. Is that correct? Or is this a preliminary approval I would, or a review? It said preliminary review on the agenda. So I'm trying I to would imagine the applicant, if the board were so inclined, would uh, appreciate action on preliminary uh, approval if the board feels that they've met those standards. Um, certainly, as you depicted, a preliminary approval, the town's process who require two-step approval. There's a preliminary approval and then a final approval, which sort of the issues that were talked about here today get sort of codified. The, the note on the plan regarding Doug Wells would be established. Any notation regarding limited, limiting clearing, those sorts of things that the board has raised here today would be dealt with um, moving forward. Um, so unless there's any significant issues the board sees, um, typically preliminary approval would be granted at this time. All right, so I, I mean personally I have not seen anything that would um, prompt me not to make a, such a proposal, so I shall. Uh, I <clears throat> move that we give preliminary approval to Star Homes, Inc. request for a four-lot residential subdivision off Burnham Road titled Burnham Heights Subdivision. Is there a second? I second. Mr. Mazur, thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And I show that to be unanimous. Thank you. I will move on to item number eight, our town planner's report. Um, let's see, uh, just two things to mention. Um, so typically we meet every three weeks with the holidays sort of fitting within that three-week time frame. Our first meeting of 2015 will be January 5th. So that will be our next meeting is January 5th of 2015. Um, I also note that uh, we do have two outgoing members, uh, Mr. Buffard and Mr. Paul have served, uh, Mr. Buffard has served four years, Mr. Paul nine years, seven of those as chair. Thank you both for your, your efforts to the town. Um, I do know the council has at least um, had first reading on appointing one additional member to the board. Um, and so hopefully that will be done by our January meeting and I believe they have two other names they're considering and trying to figure out what position people would like to be on with the town. So uh, I imagine we will have a full board shortly, but I know we'll at least have one or likely to have one new member in January. Um, so that's what I have for you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. An administrative amendment report. I do not have anything to report at this time. Uh, any correspondence that has not been previously mentioned? Seeing none, planning board comments. Yes. Yes, Mr. Mason. Uh, one comment and then a uh, motion. My comment is I want to thank the chair for his advice, leadership, and uh, expertise. He's taught me a lot. I certainly am going to miss him on this board, but I hope he will continue to be involved in all of the town uh, boards as much as time allows for him, and I want to personally thank him. 
Um, as far as motion, since he is leaving, uh, we need to uh, uh, have a, a new board uh, as far as chair, vice chair, and secretary is concerned. And I'd like to move the following, that Mr. Corey Fellows be chairman, that Ron Mazer be vice chairman, and Mr. John DuPont be secretary. I believe that that'll, that action will be taken up at the next meeting. I don't need that there's a formal motion. Is there, Mr. Chase? He made that in the form of a motion. He did. So, yeah. All right. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Thank you, Dave. Is there any discussion? I have some discussion, but more from a <clears throat> Robert Rule's point of view more than anything. <laughs> um, I just don't know the wisdom of an outgoing chairman voting for a current chairman's spot. I, I have no problem with the slate as proposed. I just don't know if that's, that would be typical in a, to have a outgoing body, because you kind of reconstitute once you add in new members. I, I believe that... I don't have a problem with the yeah. slate as proposed. I have a problem with the process right I, now. And I'll be ha I will be happy <laughs> to abstain, <laughs> if that makes it easier. Well, if you abstain, then I should abstain. Exactly. Right. So then they, are we down to three? Are we still good on that? The three vote is a satisfactory vote. I I hate to be this guy. I really do, especially on your last night, but I'm going to do it. I, I can't do it. I, I think when you have a, a new full board, it should be something that is taken up at the start. Um, who, leads the bo who leads the meeting then next time? I think um, I think your, your current vice chairman does, right up until the point. Well, then, would you like to add other members then on the slate? No, absolutely not. That, I mean, this is why I'm saying I hate to be that guy, but I also feel it's awkward to have an old board voting for new chairmanship positions without the, the presence of new board members. That, the outgoing city council just didn't elect a new, you know, a town you know, as as chair of the council. The the new council selected their chair. That's that's all I'm I'm pointing out here. It, and I, hate, I, like I, said, I hate to be that guy. Right, no, that's fine. That's fine. I, I believe that Mr. Mazur is responding to a request from a previous meeting where we suggested that a slate of officers be brought forth to the board for consideration. At that time, it was my intent, at least, to suggest that Mr. Mazur, as one of his duties as secretary, bring that slate of officers to the board and advise the board who he was bringing forth as a slate of <coughs> officers with the intent that that slate would then be voted on at the first meeting where the new board convenes, which would be January 5th. Okay. So that clearly was my intent when my request was made to Mr. Mazur to bring a slate of officers um, to this board for consideration. I think we can potentially solve your concern if Mr. Mazur were to I do. Uh, remove <laughs> his motion <laughs> and that to the motion the would then be brought up on the meeting of the 5th. We could probably resolve this issue. I support the recommendation. But I, it's, that's up to Mr. Mazur and um, that's fine. And Dave. So if they would like to handle it that way, then that would, no, that would work. Recommendation for the next board meeting. Okay. Highly satisfied. Now, Robert's rules. Dave, where are we? <laughs> Put him to work right at the end. Um, I, I think on this one, I'm not sure. I think you actually need to formally withdraw the motion. And we'll let it fail. Oh, as uh, far as the motion. As far as borrow a motion, I can withdraw he, can, motion. he can withdraw his motion. Sure. Yeah. I withdraw the motion. Do you withdraw your second? Uh, yes. You do. So the motion is removed. Now I'll make a recommendation. Now you can make a recommendation. Of the following. All right. For the record, I am very supportive of the recommendation, of Mr. Mazur. All right. <laughs> nice. Moving forward. Other board comments? Uh, yes. I don't know if, oh, sorry, if <coughs> uh, 
Yeah, I just want to thank the board and uh, uh, for allowing me to uh, serve with you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I've certainly uh, enjoyed my time here, and I've certainly enjoyed uh, watching uh, our chairman lead the group. I think uh, you've been more than qualified. Thank you. And uh, I think you've taken us through a lot of uh, tough spots with your leadership. Uh, and I wish the board well going forward. And I uh, encourage you to uh, read that book. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, I was remiss in uh, thanking David also for his time on the, on the board. Uh, he's been a... Uh, Welcome edition, and uh, I'm certainly going to uh, miss him also, and I, uh, you know, wish him well in his adventures. And I know he's been, he's going to do a little more traveling than he had been before. So I wish him well on his adventures and thank him. Thank you. Oh, I will continue with the uh, thank yous because it has literally been uh, a huge pleasure to watch uh, you serve this community. I've learned so much uh, just just watching and being around you and seeing how you you handle yourself in these meetings and the, the amount of time and care you've taken with all of the projects that have come before us. You've, you've always looked out for the interest of this community, and I think it's, it's admirable that you have served us for this long and in, in this capacity, and it really has been a privilege to watch you um, as, as you've, you've led this committee forward. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to leave uh, Dave out here. He is, he's been a pleasure as a seatmate. Um, you know, we get to uh, do the little nudge, nudge, wink, wink thing once in a while. It's, and, and you know what, he, he's all above, board. all above board, of course, but uh, the, the, you know, it's, it's just been a pleasure. All of you, you know, just true professionals. Um, this community is so fortunate to have people like you that are willing to, to do this. I know the pay is exorbitant, and uh, you wouldn't do it otherwise, but uh, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to miss the paycheck from this, right? Uh, all zero dollars of it. But it's fantastic. I, I really appreciate both of, both of your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll make you guys squirm just a little bit more. <laughs> um, no, I'd also like to... Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, uh, David and our and our chairman. It's been a pleasure working with you both, and both very sort of steadying presences. And um, uh, Mr. Chair, you've you've really set a very high standard over the seven years that you've led the board in terms of always being very clearly prepared and thorough and methodical and um, just sort of really uh, keeping an even keel, and um, you've, you've definitely set the bar high for, for those who will follow you and uh, uh, learned a lot as well. So thank you. thank you, and I'm glad that you'll still be around uh, in other capacities here with the town and in town hall. And I certainly hope to be, yeah. right. so, and look forward to that. Right. Um, I'd like to make a few comments. I've never known to been brief, so I apologize to the board in, in advance, but thorough and methodical. Um, first of all, thank you for all your kind words. I really appreciate that. And um, I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, my time on the board um, and working with the applicants. Um, it's really kind of interesting and fun to be able to drive around the town and see certain things that you know that you've had an impact on. Um, I'm sure somebody on the board will continue my desire to not have painted sidewalks. There's probably applicants who cringe when I say that, but I hope somebody somebody uh, continues to do that. But just to give you a little bit of, uh, of background, things that you may not know, and, and Ms. Oglis is not here tonight, but it was a little over nine years ago when Susan approached me and asked me to join the planning board because they had a need. And so I wanted to thank her for actually reaching out to me and getting my interest up. And um, 
uh, having me get on the board and serving with her for a couple of years before she termed out and then left us and came back for a very short stint and then actually left us again and I hope now she's back again for a little while. So I want to thank her. I certainly want to reach out and thank, thank the staff. Um, I, I can't say enough about the impact that both Dan and Jay have on the results of this planning board. It's phenomenal. The effort that they put forth, the information that they provide us, they make our job very easy. And uh, the town of Scarborough is incredibly lucky to have the two of them on board. Certainly it goes without saying, Carol, who used to serve in the past, uh, in Karen's position, and you know, the person in the background is Robin, who keeps a lot of things happening, who we don't get to see very much, but uh, want to reach out to her as well. Uh, past board members, certainly this board uh, has been a lot of fun to be with. And we, I think we've got a lot done. I think we've been effective, and I think we have, in fact, um, tried to work with the applicants, tried to work with the townspeople, and I th think we've done a pretty decent job overall. So appreciate that. Uh, I do have one thing. Um, Mr. Fellows and I have been on this board the longest, uh, Corey, eight of the nine years that I've been here, and I, I feel like I do need to leave him something, um, maybe for the board to remember me by, but certainly something for Corey to remember me by. <coughs> I have... <laughs> The lifesavers that need to come to the meeting so that they can be passed around, and I didn't want him to be empty-handed out those, of the gate. Are those nine years old? Uh, no, they're not <laughs> nine years old. Actually, that bag is fairly fresh. It's been replenished, but I definitely wanted to leave something to Corey um, for everybody to remember by, and I'll leave this one in the bag, but <laughs> we can kind of pass that on. Thank you. And uh, certainly last but not least, I um, want to thank my wife. As you know, there's a lot that goes into this. This few minutes that we spend is minimal compared to what happens week after week. So, little shout out to her. Thank you. And with that, I shall make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? And good evening. Four seconds. Four. 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 Four.